Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Tim Brangels. You might uh, know me from when I used to work for Open <laughs> until 2018, I think. Uh, I joined another lab and worked on the RPI software there. And since January 1st, I, uh, I joined um, Ripen CC again. Um, okay. um, <clears throat> so in that capacity, I want to give you an update. Um, let me just dive straight into the details because time is short. Um, what have we been doing? Um, we've been doing a lot of work on the user interface uh, for RPI, the dashboard. And the reasons why, well, the current interface actually works quite well, we believe, um, but some uh, processes are a bit suboptimal. For example, uh, when you create a ROA, there's a red button that appears in the bottom right of your screen. You have to notice that, click that, and say, yes, I really want to create this thing. Um, that's an example of a, process, of a process that we want to improve. Um, but, I mean, theoretically, you could also, also improve that in the current stack, but we also wanted to replace the current stack because of uh, maintainability and uh, uh, to make it easier for us to uh, add new functionality to it. So a uh, user um, uh, feedback was guarded by our UX expert in um, Rome, the right meeting, and um, um, in one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, sessions afterwards. Um, that led to a design that we're implementing now. Um, I also mentioned this uh, in my email to the routing working group uh, that I sent this week, so you might see, have seen it there as well. Um, we're not quite ready yet, but we'll be soon ready for beta testing this functionality, and if anybody's interested in that, then let me know, and I'll make sure that we can work something out. Um, <clears throat> to give you a small example, the, the thing I mentioned earlier, so now when you create a new ROA, you get an explicit question that says, uh, that asks you like, do you want to apply this now? Or essentially, do you want to keep making changes? Um, if you apply now, then it's applied. If you keep making changes, then you enter a flow where um, essentially you can stage multiple pending changes. And you then take into an overview page where you see the effect of all those changes based on the information that we have from uh, 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 risk of systems. Um, now, switching subjects a bit, future functionality. Um, we want to work on new RPKI object types. So in my mind, the most promising and important one uh, would be ASPA, because I think that has a lot of potential to further uh, secure uh, uh, routing. Um, but there are also other things, such as uh, resource sign checklists, BGP cycle router certificates. Um, the, I just showed you in the previous slide, we give you information about uh, what we see in BGP and how your ROAS uh, would affect that. Um, but that information can be quite old, can be up to eight hours old. So we could also look into making that feedback faster because um, well, we have that information, um, we can get to it, it's work. But, and therefore, you know, it's also a question of priority. Um, we think that new object types are probably more important at this time, but if you feel differently, then please do let us know. Uh, similarly, there have been questions in the past about IRR integration, like why do you need to maintain both ROAS and root objects separately? It's a lot of work for you, um, but, the short of it is that integrating that into one system is not trivial and you need to make choices about how you do that. And we need to have a discussion about that essentially before we can pick up that work. Um, I'll spend one minute. I'm going to skip this one for the minute <laughs> because, well, I thought it was important to include it because if you download the PDF and you have a bunch of links that you can follow to learn a lot more about it, but uh, I don't think time permits to really go into the details now. Other work that we've been doing. Um, hardware security modules, HSMs, um, essentially used to keep keys private and to provide a, a good source of random. Uh, we use them extensively. Our trust anchor uses them, uh, but also our online system relies on HSMs. Uh, meaning, for example, that the keys in, in the database and in backups are not usable by others. 
um, we needed to replace the hardware for the online system, and we needed to replace the uh, um, laptop that we used for the offline signing. And that also involves a lot of testing with uh, the USB-based uh, HSM that we use. Um, <clears throat> Philip already talked about this quite a bit. Um, I just wanted to make it a bit more tangible. So what does the uh, work on the audit uh, mean, except for, you know, being able to show that you do your work well? I think it also really helps us because it forces us to really look at our processes and make improvements where we see possibilities to improve things. Um, it has taken quite a serious uh, effort from the team, but I think what I'm trying to say is that that's worth it. Uh, also from a perspective of, you know, purely improving what we do. So for example, um, a um, business continuity plan, I mean, we had that, um, we, we didn't have a formal plan, let's say. Let, let, me, let me put it that way. But we did have documentation and we did have ideas and our engineers knew what to do in case of certain outages. Um, but being forced to write that down is, is actually quite helpful. Um, one of the things we came across is that um, the data back, uh, database backups were done uh, less frequently than we would like, so we improved that. Um, and, oh yeah, last but not least, this is a bit too high for me. I'm not as tall as Felipe. <laughs> um, the uh, certification practice statement, you might have seen that an update was sent to, uh, to the routing working group uh, about this. Uh, that document hadn't been updated in a while, and now it has been. Um, what I want to end with is uh, quickly uh, mention to you that the NRO now has a RPI program as well. The RERs have been meeting at ITS mainly um, since, well, as, as far as I can look back. Um, but that were usually informal gatherings where ideas were shared and uh, exchanged. And, you know, we could learn lessons from each other, but uh, there was no formal uh, goal setting or um, collaboration in that sense. It was useful, but it was not that. Now, however, there is a uh, NRO RPI program with a program manager, uh, Sophia, who you might know. Uh, she used to work for uh, LACNIC and uh, later APNIC. Uh, she's still based in uh, Brisbane, but now our focus is on this. Um, read the links if you're interested. Um, this, uh, I copy and paste it from one of those documents. Essentially, the overarching goal of the whole program is to, to see where the RERs can improve things by collaborating. So what are your main obstacles and barriers that should be solved by the RERs together, right? Um, and if you have ideas that, about this, then please, you can talk to us, you can talk to Sophia. Um, we are very happy to know about it. Um, for the moment, we did uh, do some, uh, we did do our own goal setting um, and key objectives. They're quite high level. And well, that's just the stage where we are. We hope to make them more tangible in the, in the time to come. Um, but essentially, it's a definition of what a single global RPI uh, system uh, should look like. Uh, we want to have a better understanding and improved transparency of robustness. So is the system available? Um, how quickly do you publish, for example? Um, we want to look at things from a security angle, like are we all doing um, handling security uh, well enough? Or are there gaps? Because they might affect the system as a whole. And of course, uh, a cross-cutting uh, concern, as they sometimes say in software engineering, is that we want to engage with the technical community, which is, well, you and others. Um, the short term of it is that, um, well, we're meeting, we are trying to make these goals more tangible, but uh, we're essentially establishing where we are now, and then we hope to get uh, real tangible work items out of this uh, going into next year. And that brings me to the end.
Thank you, Tim. Are there, uh, oh, we have one question on the... There is an online question. It's not really to do with RPKI. Um, Maximilian Emig of Univerg asks, I'm still missing the search bar for the database on the new wipe.net. There is still enough free space in the mini bar. What is the advantage of the extra steps compared to the before state? <coughs> Sorry, that doesn't echo, so it's difficult. Um, to so it, it's, it, it's, it's more of a... Uh, it's, it's about the wipe.net website. Website. About the main website. Yeah. About, yeah. Um, about, the, about a search. Yes. I, I don't think I'm the one to answer that question, to be honest. Uh, I know that there has been discussion about that when there was a new, the new website was launched. But uh, do we have somebody in the room who can answer that? So the search on the main map side, uh, I think it used to be easier to search the right database immediately. Um, I think I have to defer that question to uh, somebody else because it's... Well, I'm not part of that. I uh, see uh, Hans Petter come into the mic. Hi, so Hans Petter Holen, managing director again. Uh, our web services manager, Phil, uh, is here by the services desk. So go and talk to him. He's soliciting input on improvements to the website. So we are using um, uh, user experience uh, research methods into looking at the changes we're doing, testing them, and seeing what's uh, what's working and what's not working. So he's really interesting to interested to hear uh, input and looking uh, on how we can improve. That's great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Hans Petter. I think it's always useful to get feedback from uh, from users um, on the uh, on the website. So uh, feel free to if if you're obviously if you're not here, you're not going to see Phil on the registration desk, but I'm sure he'll be more than happy to receive an email from you um, about this. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, thanks, Tim. <laughs>